Hey everybody, it's Dina from dinadraws.com and today I have a video for my advanced beginner, intermediate, consistently painting watercolor folks. So in this video, I'm going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into synthetic sable versus synthetic squirrel. Before we do that, I wanna make just a couple of things clear so you really understand where I'm coming from. Number one, while you notice that I use Trakel brushes in this video, I have no relationship with the company and I have no financial interest in anyone buying those brushes. When I recommend product, I have no financial interest in anyone buying that product. I am sharing knowledge that I have gained, sometimes at personal cost, sometimes much to my personal delight. And that is why I am here and why I'm interested in talking about tools, methods, and techniques. And yes, sometimes that does mean that I will enthusiastically recommend or dissuade you and discourage you from a particular brand based on my experience. So one other point I want to make is the absence of actual squirrel fur brushes and the absence of actual weasel or stoat fur brushes, which are sable. So I make this choice not out of any ethical impetus away from synthetic or away from fur. There are compelling reasons to avoid synthetics. There are compelling reasons to avoid fur. And I will leave that ethical battle to those who are far more qualified than I am. What I do know is this, and this is what informs my choice to use exclusively synthetic brushes. I am hard on things. It is very easy for me to get lax in my brush care and upkeep and handling. And the other thing is that I lose things. I'm getting up there in years and I can put a pencil behind my ear and forget that it's there for a couple of hours and reach around for a pencil in a panic. So spending upwards of $100 on a paintbrush that can just as easily go anywhere is just not a choice that I really want to make at this point in my life. And I've never been wired to really be organized and know where all my stuff is at all times. So if that's you, then I can pretty much solidly suggest that spending not the maximum on your paintbrushes is probably going to be a decision that you won't regret. So those are just a couple of the ground rules and criteria for how we're gonna have this conversation. But now I wanna move on and take a look at the differences between our synthetic sable and our synthetic squirrel and what those offer us as painters. So I wanted to discuss the difference between my rounds a little bit. And the first thing that we'll do is take a close look at these brushes and see what some of these potential differences look like. So as we look at the, my brushes, I have two of each type. I have two that are faux squirrel and I have two that are faux sable. And these brushes over here are the faux squirrel. And I want you to take a look at the round shape in each instance here. And you'll see that there's just a fuller belly to this brush. The tip is rounder and wider. That's the first thing that's visible. And these brushes are maybe ever so slightly damp, but pretty much dry. As we look at the faux sable brushes, what do we notice? We notice that these come to a very extreme tapering point. These brushes do not flare out as much as they join up with the handle. They don't have much of a shape beyond this very slender, extreme tapering point. So that is one of the first differences that you will notice. Does this make a difference in how this brush behaves when you are painting with it? Quite significantly. So that is one reason that you may want to examine more closely some of the types of brushes on offer for you. And a lot of times I will hear um, instructors kind of discourage students from making faux squirrel an early brush that they start including and adopting because it is very soft. And I don't necessarily feel that way. 
I feel that with synthetics, it is reasonable to get a size six or eight in both a squirrel and a sable. And I think that the sooner you become familiar with the different properties that you can expect these brushes to have, the sooner you're able to incorporate both types of mark making vocabulary into your painting. So I find that this can be very helpful. Let's take a close look beyond just the sort of shape of the brush at how these two options behave, interacting with water and interacting with paper. So I've just prepped a little bit of a wash in an ultramarine blue over here. And what I'm going to do is saturate my faux squirrel brush. And I'm just going to put this wash over my paper until my brush is dry. So I want to just exhaust all of the water and all of the paint that I have within this brush load. So this is a very wet kind of heavy brush load. It's a little bit wetter and heavier than I might go in with if I just wanted a flat wash of color. But you see that I get pretty extensive coverage. And so that is my size eight faux squirrel doing its thing. I'm going to do the same thing using my size eight faux sable and let's see what happens. So I get quite a decent amount of coverage, but we see that this brush load is not nearly as full as the brush load that we get when we use what's described as faux squirrel of a reasonable quality. So if these were natural brushes, these would be consistent across the properties that these brushes would have. So for example, if I had a Kalinsky brush, it would probably hold more water than this. It would probably perform a little differently from this. But if we compared that with a natural squirrel brush, the squirrel would hold more water and give a bigger area of coverage. The sable would hold less water and give a smaller area of coverage. So these are some of the things to think about. Why would you want to have one of each type of brush or even more? This kind of starts to answer that question a little bit. There are times when you want to cover a large area in a flat, consistent way, and we get flat and consistent in watercolor by not messing around with it, by just putting down our paint and walking away. So this thirsty brush that holds a lot of wash leads us into the direction of being able to do that fairly easily. Sometimes we want a lot of precision. We want detail, we want shaping, and we want to be able to really put precise marks down on our page without having to reach for three different sizes of brushes to do it. And that is the strength of the sable or faux sable brush. So let's look a little bit more at that in detail because we see what each of these brushes will do just in a wash scenario. But what kinds of marks can we expect to get in each case? So once again, I'm loading my squirrel brush, but this time I'm not loading it to the max. I'm just putting some wash into this brush, tapping it along the side of my well, and that's kind of a default neutral, how I would typically load a brush if I wasn't being really specific and deliberate about doing it in some unique way. So what kinds of variety do I get with thick and thin mark making, thick and thin strokes using the squirrel brush? What do my sort of thick and thin pulsing lines look like in this case? So that is what they look like or can look like. Let's do the same with my faux sable. And I'm just going to do that same thing, just sort of a thin to thick pulsing line that goes thin and then thick again, just seeing what my brush will do. So we notice right away that the different loading comes into play, but we also notice that the thick is not as thick, but the thin is much more thin. We have some real precision. 
So this faux sable brush gives me the possibility of some beautifully nuanced, detailed, thick to incredibly thin and tapering results. I would say that the difference is the ratio between the thinnest thin and the thickest line is much wider than it is with the squirrel. But the squirrel brush gives me some really nice qualities too. So, okay, so it's thin, aspect is not as interesting. It's not as detailed or precise, but it still gives me a nice thin line. And I get these really beautifully gestural abilities to just flick these um, really weighty, nice, thick gestural strokes. So this is the kind of bold, strong gestural mark that frankly I can't get from my sable brush. So I can get these really gestural and thick and fully decisive kind of marks from this brush. So that kind of immediate gestural decisive, like that kind of stroke is not really the forte of a sable brush or a faux sable brush. As I reach for my sable or my faux sable when I want to put a stem on this guy because my squirrel brush cannot do that nearly as nicely. So having both of these tools at my disposal, in my opinion, is really the ideal. So here's the thing, I feel that if I don't have to choose between these two types of brush, then I don't. If somebody is standing over my shoulder saying you can only have one size eight for this painting, then I'll pick. And which one I'll pick is anyone's guess on that day of the week. But without being forced to choose between those two, it makes sense, doesn't it, that I would want one of each with me because each one offers me very different approaches to making marks. It doesn't leap out at you and hit you over the head, but it is a subtle and significant difference. And it's these types of differences that give us nuanced, interesting, and varied mark making. So I'm much more interested in being able to exploit the strengths that this type of brush offers, as well as the strengths that this type of brush offers, because together they give me the widest vocabulary and they give me the most number of possible solutions to each tiny little visual problem that presents itself in my painting as I break it down. So just as a quick recap, let's look at the predominant qualities of a faux squirrel brush. So this type of brush is floppy. The bristles are extremely soft. It is thirsty and will mop up and hold a lot of water in its reservoir. And as we use the brush and paint with it, what we'll notice is that this brush will bend or fold up and it will not return to its given shape until we put more water and paint into it or until we deliberately reshape it with our fingers. So those are not drawbacks, they're just features. These are just the characteristics that we expect from a brush which is described as synthetic squirrel. A synthetic sable brush is stiffer by comparison. It's still soft enough that it will hold water in its reservoir, but it will return to its given shape or point as we paint with it. So this quality of returning to form is what we describe as snap. It returns to form as we use it, and it gives us more control and more specificity in our mark. It does not create as expressive a mark without us going to some trouble to make that mark expressive, but it does give us a more consistent and more predictable mark than a brush which is described as faux squirrel.
So a lot of people will be watching a video like this because they're looking to buy a tool of this type and there's a lot out there and it can get kind of overwhelming. So I have some recommendations. Before I do that, I wanna reiterate that I do not have any affiliate links. That's not how I do it around here. So what I get from you buying any of my recommendations are just good vibes that I've steered you towards something that I at least think is not going to frustrate you. So examples of a synthetic squirrel brush are Princeton Neptune, this is pretty widely available. I put it on the list first because it will be the easiest for you to locate. And they're nice brushes at a decent price point. They do the job of synthetic squirrel pretty well. Trakel is a brush company that sells exclusively through its own website. So it can be a bit harder to track down. However, I really like their synthetic squirrel line called Onyx to the point where I go to the extra trouble of ordering my brushes specifically from them. These are priced decently. They're a bit higher of a price point than the other recommendations on this list, but they are very well made and the experience of using these brushes is just very comfortable those sort of intangible things about what makes a brush feel really good to use just really kind of work for me with their version. So another option, if you don't want to do this targeted shopping, if you want to do a little bit more of a one-stop shop, is Creative Mark brushes do something called Mimic, where they do faux versions of all kinds of natural fibers and bristles. So their squirrel version, they're just fun brushes. They always put a smile on my face when I use them. And the price is normally competitive with Trakel Onyx, but we're heading into the holidays and it should be easy to grab up a set of these at a deep discount. So Creative Mark Mimic Squirrel through Jerry's Artorama is a really good and fun option in this category. Now, a lot of people might be wondering about Silver Black Velvet. This is an immensely popular, highly recommended brush that has a huge following and they look great. I think they're probably amazing brushes. I don't include them here because they're a blend. So they blend squirrel fur with synthetic. So this beefs up the squirrel fur a bit and it still gives you this really beautiful articulate and very, um, really just a nice elegant painting experience from what I see. I just don't think it's fair to include that type of brush in this category and those who are avoiding fur will not want to use this particular tool. So synthetic squirrel is pretty niche. It's really for watercolorists mostly. Synthetic sable is kind of for everybody. So it's all over the map. So these are three recommendations that I think work with watercolor and are good and fairly easy and accessible. So the first of these is Princeton's Aqua Elite. I really like this line because it is very precise, very elegant, really just feels good to use and gives a really good consistent result. They're a bit pricey in terms of what you can get for a synthetic, but I find that this is one of those instances where the price and the quality kind of mesh together pretty well. Trakel Protégé is very similar to Princeton Aqua Elite. They're a little bit less expensive. You can get them directly from Trakel. So again, you have to go outside the sort of big box art store realm to get these brushes, but I use them and I really, really enjoy using them a lot. And I think they work great with watercolor. If you want something that is widely accessible and perhaps a little lower in price point, then Princeton 4050 is a brush that I can strongly recommend and it should be really easy for you to find. Princeton also makes a range called Velvet Touch, which I think is pretty similar. And the Velvet Touch line comes in lots of different specialty shapes. The Aqua Elite line comes in lots of different specialty shapes, so you can really have some fun digging in and seeing what kinds of marks you can make. The 4050 is just a great all-around brush that has that fundamental characteristic of snap. So you paint with it and it will snap back to shape. At the same time, the 4050 is soft enough that it will hold water. 
So this is just a really good, solid, all-around watercolor brush that's a little bit better than a total entry-level brush, but a little bit less expensive than some of these more sort of professionally oriented options. So those three options should get you off to a great start if you're looking for a synthetic watercolor sable. So if you have watched to this point, or if you have skipped to this point, either way, thank you so much for taking a look at this video, and I really hope that this content has helped you understand your tools and make some decisions about them that are valuable and relevant for you. If you like this kind of material and would like to see more of it, leave a comment to that effect, as well as hitting like and subscribe and getting notifications. I'm still trying to figure out how I can best help and serve you guys with the information that I've accumulated for what it's worth. I've had a great time looking at brushes with you together today and painting with you, and I cannot wait to do it again. I appreciate you watching so much, and until next time, take care.